Good morning, it is bright and early and we are coming to you walking around the Dusseldorf Airport as we head to the train station to go over to Movie Park Germany. Uh, it's been two days since the last video, uh, but we haven't done any parks since then. We actually, uh, we walked around Copenhagen, we took a flight over to Dusseldorf, we went and walked around Imaskor, which was fantastic, we got to see a bit of Dusseldorf last night, now we're heading over to Movie Park for what should be a pretty good day. How's the last two days been? I loved Copenhagen. Dusseldorf was super fun, very lively. Very lively. Just a giant party. Yeah. Um, and obviously I'm a score was, I'm a score, it's awesome. It was, it was pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and hop on this train. So today I learned that the word fat in German means <laughs> to ride. So today I'm going to fat a lot of roller coasters. How was your fat? <laughs> My great fat. How about you? It was excellent fat. <laughs> We're now waiting for another fat. A very big fat. <laughs> yeah, this one. This next fat comes in 20 minutes. <laughs> It's a fun fact, they're actually doing uh, some filming for the Hunger Games prequel around here uh, in Duisburg. There was a casting call put out for, I believe, some amputees, and then you look at stuff like this and it's like, yeah, I could see this being one of the districts. Off the train and literally everyone here is for movie park. And fun fact, there is a second small theme park just behind these trees over there. And we're gonna try and fit it in. They have some self-operated rides. Is there a self-operated roller coaster? Yeah, uh, no, not the roller coaster, but there is like a, a half pipe thing that like goes into water that you operate yourself. Oh, I could so be a ride operator for a day. All right, I'm about to enter movie park Germany. So here's what we got. So this wristband is good for food all day. Excellent. This right here are our skip the line. So essentially each of these rides we can skip once. They do like a stamp thing. And then uh, those are our one day ticket. Welcome to Movie Park Germany! That's your first ride. I gotta commend them though. They're playing some good music here. Yeah, they're playing Good Morning Baltimore, which I love this song. Yeah. It's a lot of like, it's a mixture of like soundtracks from movies and then like theater music, which is like perfect. That's a really cool ride. So it's a Gerstner bobsled. So it wasn't even really like a wild mouse, like uh, how Thor's hammer like started off doing that sort of thing. This was like purely like low to the ground transitions. There was a lot more theming than I was expecting. Yes, it's, it's a bird. He's dead. He's a dead bird. He's dead. You know what he looks like? He looks like um, uh, what's his face from Moon Knight? Oh, um, Ish Ishaku Ishanku. Whatever. But that ride was super cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I liked it. Intense. I'm pretty sure I got stuck on you at one point. Yeah. Mr. From the laterals. And it was a pretty good gray out, I'm pretty sure I had. But I don't there, know, it was kind of dark. Time yeah, time. there were moments when you couldn't really see anything at all. Uh, but then there were moments where it was actually fairly well lit. So. There's just a lot of theming in there. I was not expecting it. Yeah. See, that just shows that you can take a ride that's like, hey. Throw some theming on it and put it in a cool environment yeah. and it becomes like awesome. And then what do you do after you get off the ride? You go to the Van Helsing Buffet! This wristband thing is awesome. I just got this donut included for free. Bottle of water was 25 cents, but if you take the bottle to a recycling place, then you can get it back. And then uh, it comes with a free Coke and is unlimited. So I could literally get back in line right now and get another one. 
They are literally playing Harry Potter through the streets of Movie Park Germany. That is awesome. Just really great mu music selections here. It's just like an ode to all these really famous movies around the world. And this is our first look at Movie Park Studios. What the this is the. Uh, I kind of, yeah. So this <laughs> is their newest attraction. It was actually new as of last year. It's an Intamin indoor outdoor family launch coaster. It has a lot of dark ride sections. That's going to be our next attraction. I'm excited to check this this thing out. Alright, about to do our first ride on Studio Tour. I'm getting a great movie ride vibes, big time. Movie Park Studios is fabulous. That is that's so cool. that's a great ride. Like I have the biggest smile on my face the whole time. Yeah, it, it is so much fun. I mean, the, the roller coaster aspect of it is obviously it's so family friendly, tame, but it's, but it's so okay. Fun. Like that is a, that's a brilliant creation. Like it's a great use of space. Uh, the theming was awesome. Like it's tame, but it's tricky because it's yeah. some stuff that like if you're you know if you're a younger kid and you haven't done that many roller coasters, you'd be definitely surprised by it. Yeah, like, uh, oh my gosh, the backwards section, the turntable, that was so cool. I love that thing. That is so good. Welcome to Nickelodeon Land, where they have a bunch of rides themed to uh, famous Nickelodeon shows. So right here is a lock of them themed to Dora the Explorer. This right here is themed to uh, Mission to Mars, I guess, which is actually something I'm unfamiliar with. Then this right here is themed to uh, SpongeBob. Look at this! Oh my gosh! You go through the Krusty Krab, the Squidward, SpongeBob Patrick. Oh, there's like one of the boats. It's like a submarine. And then there's a pineapple. I love this. It's so cool. Holland Tunnel, six dollars. Try like sixteen. Gosh, they're lying to these children, making them think they can afford the tolls. Hey, Sarah, ready to Jimmy Neutron's Atomic Flyer? Ha, <laughs> got a blast! Jimmy Neutron Atomic Flyer there is a fun little suspended coaster by Vacoma, and it actually goes around twice. Yeah, it was a fun ride. Yeah, it's a cute little thing. It's not too big, but uh, it's also nice to see that they made a second gen version of those. I think of like the uh, old like hang and bangs, like the ones at uh, Kings Island and uh, Legoland Florida, Carowinds. Definitely no head banging. Yeah, yeah, it's a lap bar, so it makes it way yeah. more comfortable. Ghost Chasers is themed to SpongeBob and the Flying Dutchman. And because it's Wild Mouse and it has a line, we're going up the Speedy Pass, so we can skip all that. to the show during the ride, which uh, I don't know, would have been kind of nice, but oh well. Their kitty area is themed to Paw Patrol, which is interesting. And actually, this is this is a good talking point right here. So right here it says no smoking in the kids area, and that's because you can actually smoke anywhere in Movie Park Germany except for the kids area, um, which as someone that really does not like the smell of cigarettes, um, that, that really bothers me, especially considering how many families are walking around, and I don't know, just in the US you have designated smoking areas, and so I, I, I can't say I'm a huge fan of that policy. So we're doing this Excalibur ride, and the entrance via Quick Pass is way hidden in this Paw Patrol section. I can't even see where we're freaking going. Like, man, this rat is tucked back here. We are entering through a giant tree. Wow. I'm guessing this is King Arthur, and he's got some slices through his painting, implying a dragon was here. What? There's a freaking round table? Oh my gosh. None of my other round table friends decided to show up for dinner. So I guess I'll eat all by myself. Okay, if you come here to Movie Park Germany, you gotta do Excalibur. First you gotta find Excalibur, then you gotta do Excalibur. That was really good. Like, that's probably the only story-driven raft ride out yeah. there. It is half 
indoors, half outdoors, and it is so elaborately themed it's the whole elaborate. time. Like, there's showrooms, um, there is, like, I don't know if they're animatronics or statues, uh, but there are there's lights, there's and statues, statues, and statues. yeah, there's, there's very theatrical. It has a custom soundtrack by Amascore. The, the set design is fabulous. Yeah, that, that was probably the coolest rap ride I've done. Yeah, like, I, I like and it inside. was not a soaker. We got lightly spritzed, it was refreshing. That, like, rose to the top on my raft list. Like, oh. normally I'm not, like, big raft guy, you know, I, I don't do those. That, that, that is awesome. Cool. I would absolutely do that again. Welcome to Star Trek and the entrance to Operation Enterprise. This is the only actual ride with a Star Trek theme. Take a look at this. Yeah. We're about to go for our first ever experience on it. And look, you can't even see the coaster. But yeah, it's behind here. This is cool. Look, it's the Enterprise. So these are actually originals from Star Trek The Next Generation. Welcome to the Starship Enterprise. Hey. Pretty cool. Look at that. Stuck on Star Trek <laughs> Operation okay. Enterprise. That's awesome. Operation Fix the Ride is now in play. So this is our view on the brake run. They uh, called maintenance, I think, over to restart the ride. So it's not like broken. It's not like anything went wrong. It's probably just a like control system thing. We're fine. We're chilling. We are entering Area 51. You know, I don't think this is what Area 51 is actually like. I don't care. This is a fully themed dark ride boat ride, and we've been told we might get soaked. But I know there was water on other planets. Hmm. Gonna go see some aliens, guys. It says no trespassing, restricted area. We gotta turn around. Yeah. All right. See you guys. <laughs> area 51, and they're playing some really fun music. Almost all of the soundtracks here are IMA score. Fun fact. Interesting that in an alien ride, we're trying to get recruited. We're trying to find the consistency here. Here's our boat. All right, that was an awesome water ride. That was really cool. It, it was a very cool ride. I don't understand exactly why they went the water route for it. As opposed to making like it a, just like a traditional dark ride? Yeah, with like a like coaster track section maybe? I, it was an interesting I, choice because I don't associate like boat ride with aliens. But it was really cool. So you go in, you know, there's there's two drops, there's a turntable, so there's a backwards section, and then you're going through all these different rooms where like there's all these uh, like aliens where it's like a brain head and then like a robot body. It was interesting. It was it really was cool. Very well done. There was very a point well where they were like experimenting on humans and they were all in these tanks. I was really hoping they would just take me out of the boat and put me into one of their things to... <laughs> no. But there were a bunch of warning lights saying, you know, get out of there and stuff. And it, yeah, that was actually really awesome. I, I really enjoyed that. Definitely. There is an area in this park themed to another park. Look at this, Santa Monica Pier, like in uh, Southern California. They have a roller coaster there that is nowhere near as big as the roller coasters in this one. Look at this, we got a Ferris wheel, there's a disco, and then Bandit, which is next up. That's a wooden roller coaster by RCCA. I don't think I've ever ridden an RCCA. Neither have I, because when I went to go to Coaster Express, it was closed, and obviously I never did Santa Beast or anything, so uh, I am very curious how this is going to ride. I'm going to close my eyes and pretend this is Santa Beast. <laughs> we've made it to the Old West. You know, it's been a couple days since we've seen an Old West uh, themed area. No, I was starting to miss the United States, and this really makes me feel good. I know, I know. I, I... This is exactly this... what it looks like where I live in Orlando, Florida. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, this is America <laughs> right here. All right, let's go for a ride on Bandit. Okay, so we just rode Bandit. That 
pride is a bully. That is a human body. That is horrible. That was so bad. I, I I cannot believe like that was both of our first rides by that company and like it, it makes you wonder what was Son of Beast like. If, if this was a mini Son of Beast, then I see why it didn't last. I'm glad that is gone. Oh my, oh gosh. my gosh! Like the whole thing, like the trains were like going side to side. It's not supposed to do that on one coaster. No. And um, like just and all of the valleys, just crazy rough. You know, we tried in the front row and it was rough. So I was like, okay, well let's see what is in the back. The back was terrible too. Was it worse? Because I sat up. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. The, the side to side was more noticeable in the front, okay. but in the back it was still like, oh my gosh. Arm seat, baby. Absolutely. That would be a great candidate. But uh, fun fact, they do have a uh, stand-up drop tower right here, kind of like Acrophobia at Six Flags of Georgia. But this one uh, doesn't really do the uh, tilting thing, but still pretty cool that they have this here. Yeah, the view is awesome. <laughs> So I just did the SLC. Uh, Sarah made the wise choice of not doing it. It was bad. Uh, there was one particular corner. It was like right around there that was particularly bad. I just don't understand why so many of these rides got sold because they're not fun or enjoyable. And the, as the old restraints, they're just super bulky and annoying. And when you're going up the lift hill, uh, you can see some fields out there, and it really smelled like cow dung. So it really just enhanced the theme of this ride, you know. So we're grabbing a slice of pizza at this place and they have margarita pizza, salami, and tuna fish. So this here is the salami, and that's the tuna fish. All right, way too late food review because the food's gone, but you tried tuna fish pizza. I did, and you know what? It wasn't bad. It was like, good. There you go. <laughs> it's like you got your line wrong, bro. Yeah. We've been told we gotta check out this stunt show. So here we go. They only do two showings per day, and this is the second one. First impressions. This actually looks really, really cool. What do you think? This is cool. I mean, I never saw the one that was at Hollywood Studios before they took it out. So honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a car stunt show oh. at a park before. All right. Well, if it's anything like what I'm expecting it to be, it's going to be really, really awesome. Driving a trash can. Am I seeing this right? How the hell is that even possible? We just got out of the stunt show. This is the gift shop right next to it. Has I don't nothing. Know what this has to do with nothing. COVID, absolutely but nothing. But I found the single best feature piece of merchandise in the park. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you, are you sure? Yes. I don't think you're ready. Are there, are there cookies inside of his mouth? <laughs> So something that we are told, so because this used to be a Six Flags park, they had access to some of the DC licensing, and this used to be a Batman simulator ride. And so then, when uh, they obviously uh, got rid of that, they had to go through some retheming. So now, we're going to experience it as the changeover from the original. Are we riding the Smiler? No, we're riding Mummy. So I guess this used to actually be Wayne Manor. That's not Bruce Wayne. A door in the library opened up and now we're in the back cave. What? Okay, so Time Riders. Uh, it was a ride. That was not how I expected a mock extreme spinner to be, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not time travel. It was an okay. experience. Um, so imagine Wild Arctic 
<laughs> but like, still not good. <laughs> With, but it, the pre-show was cool. Like the pre-show and like the queue was the best Cooler part. Than the ride. Here's the thing. Okay, it's like a simulator from like 1997. So I get it. But you like weren't even alive then. It, I was too. You're like a month. Shut up. It could definitely use some updates. Um, the graphics are very, very 90s. He gives and me a, the professor guy or whatever gives me a, the professor from Journey to Figment. Oh, I was movie. gonna say the professor from <laughs> Furious Baco. What was that? I have a thing laying on my face. I'm glad we did it. I probably wouldn't do it again. So we have an action film. Like there's some film posters for the Bandit. Bandit. Hi, I'm here to check in. Hello? Anyone? Oh, they're out to lunch. <laughs> so, yeah, this one over there. Wow. And there's all like um, concept art of the attraction. Oh my there's god. There's Six Flags helmet right, right, That's lying funny. right up on there. Like the Six Flags oh, Val Kilmer went to this park? I guess so. He's German. Oh! So that's Tom Hanks riding Bandit here at Movie Park Germany oh in a movie. And then these are all like comics, like what if the ride was like this? I kind of outlined it. It's almost like a storyboard. Looks so cool. And then there's a model of the King Kong head. Here you can see like some of the inspiration for when they were doing the coaster. Like this is awesome. Like just a bunch of Easter eggs. Uh, look at the Ghostbusters building right there. Third ride there on Movie Park Studios. We both agree. Best ride in the park. Yeah, definitely the best ride in the park. I <laughs> Hey, and you're local. Tell us a little bit about this. You were saying that this ride is like a, almost like a love letter to the park, right? It's kind of, yes. They, they put everything they could find from the history of the park into it. Like, we've just been to the queue line. There's so much Easter eggs. There's so much from old attraction concept art, uh, music DVDs, note letters, and so on. They put everything in there because this is supposed to be the studios that created all of the attractions in the park. That's the story. That's so cool. And like, <laughs> I love it. all of the details and everything, the cool scenes. Um, it, it's not too extreme, but it feels like it something. It need to be, though. It feels like something you see at like Universal. Yeah. Like, it's not high capacity enough to be at Universal, <laughs> but. It, no, but it's like, it, it gives me like Gringotts vibes. With yeah. The style, but like. Uh, great movie ride. Yeah. Kind of effects like if you did that back in the day in Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. It's like amazing. Th this ride is is marvelous. Like I'm giving it an Oscar. <laughs> Best ride in the park. Going up the quick pass for Star Trek Operation Enterprise. too much of a surprise to you. This is, it seems to be an ongoing thing with a lot of mock roller coasters. Um, and it's, a, it's definitely a short layout. Um, the other highlight for me is there's an airtime hill right before the final inversion. That's fun. Uh, and uh, the theming is cool in the station, but I, I wouldn't say it's a ride that's very like mind-blowing. Are you like, mocking think, them? Not mock ride. No, shut up. No, it's fun. It's, it, it's fun. Well, we were trying to do the Van Helsing restaurant, but they closed early, and there's randomly a bird just hurt? chilling here on the ground. Hi, sweetie. Hello. Hi, are you like, hurt? What? Is he right leg? Okay. Are you hurt? Did he, like, fall or something? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, like, can we put him in the bushes or something? What should we name him? Van Helsing. Van Helsing? I was thinking Picard, but I like Van Helsing. Woo! 
Whoa, did you just fly? Whoa, what the? Wait, you were fine? You just let me carry you around? <laughs> Are you kidding me? He just wanted you to He was me. fine this whole time? You just let me just pick you up and carry you around? All right, have and fun in your tree. What is up with German birds? Dude. First, I get almost attacked by a pigeon. Now, this bird just let me carry him around. Dude, that was like the VIP treatment. He thinks that we're a freaking limo service. Never mind, I'm getting food. All the places closed at like 4 or 4.30 or 5. And the park closes at six. Yeah, not a big fan of that. Plan B, the pastries again. This is Nutella filled, and this is an Oreo cupcake. This is actually very exciting. One more ride before the attractions start closing for the evening, so we're gonna make it the ride that was our first attraction of the day, Van Helsing. This was a really cool ride. Excited to do it one more time. So we're trying to do speedy pass for Van Helsing, but it is not at the entrance, it is very hidden. So here's what you gotta do. You gotta go around oh here, God. like through the trees, the top spin is over there, and it is this tiny little side entrance that is very poorly marked. Here we go, speedy entrance for Van Helsing's factory. Wow. Last ride there on Van Helsing's factory. That that's, thing is wild. That's a whippy ride. Yeah. But, like the laterals are so strong, you like end up on top of whoever's next to you. And you can't see anything for a good portion of it because it's so dark. And so you're just getting like flung around. Uh, the theming is pretty cool for the parts where there's like stuff like that you can actually see. SpongeBob and Patrick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at these shirts for the studio tour. These are so fun. Different mugs. Look at that. That's a movie park. Oh my gosh. For Star Trek, they straight up sell Star Trek shirts. I actually like how much merchandise they have for the park itself, because a lot of European parks are just slacking on the merch game. And uh, Movie Park Germany is not one of those. Nice job, guys. All right, let's play a game. What do you think is in the Old World Toys claw machine? If you guess Baby Yoda as an old world toy, nailed it! All right, we're getting ready to leave the park, and I just gotta point out how adorable this little detail is. On your way out, it says, cut, like it's the end of the movie. Ah! All right, I guess we're done with Movie Park Germany. I know. Which is kind of sad, because I really liked it. This is a great park. To all yeah. of you Germans who crap on this place, stop. Why? Stop. This place is awesome. Yeah. Stop. We're from America and we loved it. Yeah. It was great. Like, we're right down the street from Universal Studios and stuff and we're We've still gone like, this tons is great. tons of places and we really liked this park. Yeah. Like, is it perfect? No. Like, I, I'm not a fan of the, that a lot of the restaurants closed early. Yeah, and I like, didn't like that. Um, and I could do without Bandit, big I'm time. I'm not a huge fan of the mentality of like, Closing your park at six, but the rides close at five thirty. That but seems to be that's, like kind of widespread that's though. That's not across specific Europe. to this park. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can like get past that. But they do a lot of things well. Like I really liked the theming for a lot of the attractions. Yeah. Um, th they try to tell a story with a lot of them. And Which I really appreciate. Most parks don't do that, or it's very loose. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that this is like. They had the highest budget or the the best materials to create the theme. Like you know, no, but like, they did like they an did amazing a, job with what they had. Good job, yeah. I can appreciate a lot of what they did, and so like I, I genuinely enjoyed this place. Not the best ride collection, you know, but yeah, the, everything okay, that they had was was solid, you mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah, don't come here expecting like you know insane thrills, but like it's no, fun. like like Star Trek is the most thrilling thing there, and it, like. You know, it's fun. I, 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 it's fun. Yeah. Um, the real star of the show, though, was the studio tour. The studio movie park studios was great. That was so good. Um, and I, I really liked the water rides. Like I I'm know. not even. A, I'm not even a typical like. You gotta do the water rides. But like here, park. here, you gotta you, do the water you rides. You should do it. So. We're about to get run over by a car. So yeah, we're gonna move. We're gonna catch our train. Hi. <laughs> did anyone wave? He did. Hi. Well, we're back where we started here, walking from the Dusseldorf Airport Station to our hotel room. And I gotta say, as you're uh, tr almost tripping and falling right there, this was a really excellent day, and I am ready to just pass out. <laughs> like, we woke up pretty early to take the train to Movie Park, and tomorrow we're gonna be taking a train to Fantasia Land. See, the, the access to public transport around here is fantastic. Yeah. Except it's not reliable 
my yeah, we, only quarrel. We, we got lucky today where all yeah. the trains were on time, none got canceled. You gotta plan for extra time. But know? yesterday when we were in Paderborn, that uh, we, we had a train get canceled and everything. It was kind of a mess. So we're renting a car for the second half of Germany. I mentioned earlier we're doing Poland uh, to kind of break things up because we got a round trip ticket from Dortmund to Katowice and it was extremely cheap. Like, yeah. Very cheap. So that's why we Poland, did round trip. Do it in a trip with Germany. You can combine <laughs> the two. It's Ryanair, man. So once we come back to Germany, we're gonna rent a car because we're gonna go down south. Uh, but right around here, when we were doing like Dusseldorf and Movie Park and Fantasia Land, everything's hooked into uh, the rail system. So it was just actually my first time taking the the German rail system. Worth the nine euro ticket that we bought. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually cool. Uh, the nine euro ticket is a supplement because of the rising cost of oil due to the war in Ukraine. Yeah. And that is why the, the euro, uh, the, the ticket is nine euros. Because they want to encourage that. people to take transit. The problem is the trains are stuffed yeah, because it's okay. nine euros for I think the entire month. Yeah, that's what we paid. We have until the end of July. But let's talk about tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow is the, probably the day I'm most excited about for this entire trip. <laughs> it I might been, be mine too, honestly. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I have been wanting to go to Fantasia Land for years. And I have pretty much media blacked out myself. Blocked, blacked out. That's right. Okay. Um, I have hardly seen pictures. I've not seen any videos. I have purposely made sure that I saw the least amount possible. Like, if a friend of mine is visiting, I don't look at their story. So everything is going to be, like, legitimately brand new to me tomorrow. So you can expect a whole lot of... <laughs> and I can I can uh, validate that that is what it feels like stepping into Fantasia Land. I have been dying to get back to this park since the day I left, uh, almost four years ago. It was in 2018, and I was depressed. I was genuinely very sad leaving that park because I was not ready to leave. That was the biggest mistake that I made of that 2018 trip was not doing two days at Fantasia Land and not staying on site. So guess what we're doing? We're doing two days, and we're staying at Hotel Matamba. I'm gonna act out the ride I'm most excited for. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let me guess. Taryn. What? <laughs> Which is funny because it also could have been fly. <laughs> no, it was fly, you dumb dumb. It was? Yeah. I said Taryn. I know. I thought you were being sarcastic. Oh. <laughs> I, you I genuinely it thought it was Taryn. No. <laughs> All right, fly. Well, I'm very excited for fly as well. Wow. Uh, obviously, I've been like obsessing over that ride ever since like they started teasing it. I remember going in 2018 and seeing a little bit of the track there and wondering like, oh my gosh, this thing is gonna be so crazy. It looks inc insane. That's my response. Yeah, that's fair. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and say goodnight. We're gonna sleep well. And then tomorrow we have one heck of a video coming out for you guys. So thank you guys so much for joining and we'll see you in the next one.